If you had a time machine, what year would you go back to? The correct answer is 2016, so that you can invest in cryptocurrency and system memory and also GPUs, because two of those investments have increased a few X in just this last year, ignoring cryptocurrency, which we don't need to talk about that because it catalyzed the other one. But either way, right now, today, this video card, a GTX 1070 Gaming X from MSI, costs about nine, $800 to $900, 800 on a, a really good day. And although the stock sometimes does refill, if you can catch it, you get it at closer to MSRP, 400 or so, 450 maybe, that's pretty uncommon. And it's wishful thinking that any more than a couple people will ever find those deals. So in all likelihood and reality, you're probably paying several hundred dollars more for a 1070 than you should be to the point where it has become the same price as this card, a 1080 Ti when it launched. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gamers Nexus Patreon and our Patreon backers. If you want to help us out directly, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, where we have access to a Patreon-only Discord where you can chat with the GN team, or you can support us at $5 or higher and get access to behind-the-scenes videos as we release them once or twice a month. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for this video, this one was a commenter suggestion on one of our previous videos about GPU and memory prices. And the suggestion was do a $1,000 build at MSRP versus a $1,000 build at today's current prices. And that was actually a great idea. We upped it a bit. We went to 1500 to give us some room because memory and GPUs are so insanely expensive. So we went to $1,500. That was our limit. Uh, pulled components from our shelves and basically the goal was what can you fit in $1,500 today versus at either launch prices or the lowest available prices in recent history. So for memory, for example, actually we'll just go through the whole specs. For memory, this one's pretty painful. The G-Skill 2x4 gigabyte kit DDR4 3200 megahertz, pretty good memory, was $45 at its lowest in 2016. Today, that kit of memory is more than $100. It's between $100 and $140, depending on where you buy it and when. The uh, video card, if you buy a GTX 1080 Ti in the back here, would have been at its lowest $700 for an EVGA 1080 Ti SC, not the ICX card. $700 from B&H Photo for actually a significant period of time. And now those cards are $1,500. So that's where the market is today. That, that one card today would blow our entire budget for this $1,500 proposed PC build. Let's go through the specs and then run some benchmarks. There's no real point to this content other than to make everybody feel bad about how expensive everything is. You're welcome. So for the specs, the current price build is using a GTX 1070 Gaming X. We found one for $800. Obviously didn't buy it because we already have one, but 800 bucks, absolutely do not buy this card for that much money. And that's a cheap one. They tend to go 850 to 900. We also found a CPU at 8,600K at around the correct price, $260, and paired it with a $110 E370 board, pretty cheap board. And then memory was $104 for eight gigabytes at DDR4, 2,800. So we had to step it down a bit. If we compare these specs to our MSRP or lowest price in the last couple of years build, we have a $700 GPU. So let me just kind of, let me just point this out. That's $100 cheaper than the 1070, and it's like three full classes above it in performance. So a $700 GPU, and then we also saw the 8700K for $370. We were able to fit a $170 board into the budget. It's an ultra gaming board, not my favorite motherboard out there for Z370, but it's one we had. And then RAM, here's a, here's a fun one. RAM, 50 bucks, actually technically at its lowest, it was about 42 for this particular kit of two by four gigabyte DDR4-3200 memory from G-Skill. Today, more than hundred bucks. Uh, actually, for a while, that kit of memory was 70. So it was 42 at the best, 70 for a long time, and then it skyrocketed. Pick anywhere in there, you get a big discount versus today. In fact, the, at the same price point, Today, for eight gigabytes of DDR4-2800, you could, two years ago, have gotten 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200, which is pretty sad to think about. So the, the big thing here with these builds 
is the extra room afforded by the more reasonably priced GPU allows us to go from an 8600K to an 8700K, obviously allows us to get a better GPU, significantly better, and a, a better motherboard, so it can sustain better overclocks. It gives us a little bit of room to play for a CPU cooler of some kind, not an expensive one, but a decent one. And then you could probably get a slightly better power supply as well. We just stuck with a, an assumed $60 PSU cost for these. We'd recommend a bit better at $1,500, but uh, we're trying to keep some stuff simple so that we can match the two builds against one another. So let's, let's get into the benchmarks and allow the slaughter to commence. Destiny 2 starts us off for a DirectX 11 title. At 1080p and highest settings, our MSRP build with the 1080i was bumping up against a 200 FPS limiter, so the average would actually be higher than what we can show here if we could have exceeded the 200 FPS cap. Regardless, we're still averaging 179, with lows respectively at 125 and 111 FPS. The current priced build, including the CPU overclocked variant, landed at 136 to 137 FPS average. This leaves the MSRP build a lead of about 30%, which is actually quite low compared to the next test that we're going through. At 4K and still highest settings, our MSRP build is about 60% ahead because we're not limited by the FPS cap anymore, making 77 FPS averages and nearly 60 FPS lows possible thanks primarily to the would-be $700 1080Ti. By contrast, the currently priced $800-$850 GTX 1070 operated an average of 48 FPS, with lows falling to 40. The frame rate difference is perceptible and definitely noticeable. Sniper Elite 4 provides us a highly optimized DirectX 12 title, something rather rare right now. For this one, at 1080p, we saw average frame rates of 225 FPS for the MSRP build, stretching the limits of the CPU and the GPU jointly toward the upper end of the build. The current price build ran at 138 FPS average, depending on overclock, resulting in the MSRP build leading by about 61%. 4K shows similar results scaling, with the current priced build exhibiting occasional tearing, while the MSRP build operates a frame rate in excess of 80 FPS. Doom provides a Vulkan API look at performance. For this one, because Doom runs so well, we're using 4K as the only test resolution. Asynchronous compute is enabled, as it enables at zero anti-aliasing now, though some people still haven't gotten that memo. And with these settings, we're at 110 FPS average with the MSRP build, lows hovering above 80 FPS. The build with modern pricing sits at around 66 FPS average, so we are once again about 67% ahead with the MSRP build. Ghost Recon Wildlands brings us back to DX11, this title built by Ubisoft, which deserves its own category because they're so bad at optimizing games. And the MSRP build doesn't have quite as much of a lead in this game, but still sits at 118 FPS average at 1080p versus 84 to 86 FPS average for the build with modern pricing. Scaling is similar at 4K, where we go from 36 FPS to 57 FPS average. Civilization 6 mostly just pulls from previous test data from our reviews, as the AI turn time benchmark is entirely CPU bound. The MSRP build completes turns in about 16 seconds, with the current price build using an 8600K, finishing turns in about 17.5 seconds per turn. This places the 8700K about 8.6% reduced in required time per turn, which adds up when you have lots of turns until your own. Memory speed does not seem to affect this benchmark very much at all, as we previously demonstrated with the 8400 at 3200 MHz and 2666 MHz, where we saw the same performance. Blender CPU performance would largely align with what we've shown in our CPU reviews, as there's no dependency on the GPU, and there's very little difference between 2800 and 3200 MHz memory on these Intel CPUs. These numbers place the i5-8600K at around 39 minutes, time to complete the monkey head render, accelerating to 33 minutes when overclocked. The 8700K is faster even when stock at 26.5 minutes, or 24 minutes when overclocked. Again, as expected, a major loss in effective PC performance at modern prices versus original list prices, which sustained for several months. Blender CUDA rendering is done using the 1080Ti for the MSRP build and the 1070 for the current price build, landing us at 16 minutes to render a 4K frame for the MSRP build and 22 minutes for the modern build. The MSRP build completes the render with a 28% time reduction from a modern day PC of the same $1,500 price point, and this is a significant loss in performance for anyone doing CUDA 3D rendering at home. 
We also ran 3D Mark Firestrike with its normal settings, resulting in a predictable, massive scoring advantage for the MSRP build. The 1080 Ti and 8700K, understandably, lead the 1070 and 8600K, even overclocked, by about 45%. And that's without overclocking the 8700K. So the point then, if we have to have one, is that if you are new to PC building or you're returning after a hiatus, uh, bad news, it's pretty expensive right now. Everyone knows that. We've been kind of talking about that for the last couple of days with our RAM pricing and GPU pricing discussions. But this really drives it home where at $1,500, you can get a significantly better computer. And we didn't even try that hard. I mean, if I really tried, if, if we had Newegg from 2016 or, or let's call it 2017 for GPU prices accessible to us today, it would have been pretty easy to dig through it, find things with good rebates, combo deals, all kinds of incentives to buy the different memory or GPU packs before pricing went insane, depending on which year you're looking at for data. And yeah, you know, if you really tried at it, you could put together a, a better power supply than we have in there. You could have back then uh, put a better cooler in there, things like that. That would really make the build just overall a, a much more complete build. Unfortunately, we obviously have to work with the retail prices of today and no one has incentives for anything because there's no reason to offer you one if everyone's buying all the stock for GPUs. So yeah, that's a, you've got in some cases a 67% performance lead with a build that you could have assembled in reality too. This isn't just fantasy land like a little over a year ago. Uh, or a year ago for talking 1080 Ti when it came out in March. So yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate. Uh, if you want to build a computer, probably the best thing to do is you can get most of the components at a reasonable price. Memory you can't do anything about. Just bite, bite the bullet and get whatever you can at a reasonable price. GPUs, the best thing to do is show up at a retailer and ask them when their shipment will come in and then buy it off the shelf that day when the price is should be acceptable, like close to MSRP. It's just they won't have a lot of them. Uh, alternatively, camp Newegg and Amazon and B&H and everyone else and try and grab a card when they refresh. Because if you look at the GPU price, this is what the rumor mill websites completely butchered when they did their initial reports. The GPU pricing on these retailers is actually not that insane. It's the third party markets that do it. And you can look at the price history yourself on PC Part Picker. Newegg.com lists most of its 1080 Ti's as yes, increased in price, but the 1080 Ti SC from EVGA that we used as an example here is a, uh, it was a $700 card. When Newegg gets it in stock, they sell it for between 754 and 780. It is absolutely a premium that you should not have to pay. You're looking at 10% added margin on that, but it's not the $1,500 price that you'll see plastered all over news stories and on Newegg and on Amazon. But if you look through it, it's because those are third party sellers. They're basically scalpers who bought the card when it came in, relisted it for two times the price and they're ripping you off for it. So just be careful where you're buying from. Make sure on those pages, you sort down to the retailer first party they probably won't have it in stock. That's almost certainly why you're seeing $1,500 for these cards. But, you know, just try and wait, basically, is the point here. Because if you're impatient right now, and it may you might genuinely just need a PC, so you don't have a choice in that case. But if it's just a patience issue, the difference here is nearly 2x in some cases. It's not worth it. Just, just try and get a GPU if you can. But uh, that's, I don't know, I don't have any other tips for you. That's all I got. So. Uh, yeah, unfortunate on the pricing, but great suggestion by the user who posted that comment. We appreciate it. If you have more ideas, leave them below. As always, we do read those and we do try to act on those test ideas. So subscribe for more as always. If you like this type of content and want to support us, go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. I'll see you all next time.